Five, four, three, two. Coming up on Bear News, UNC President Kay Norton sent out another email this past week, and it didn't have good news for faculty and staff of the university. We have the full details. Along with Norton's latest email, she is also receiving a hefty deferred compensation. We have the story coming up. Don't go anywhere. UNC faculty and exempt staff got some bad news from UNC President Kay Norton last week. In a lengthy email last Thursday, Norton talked about the financial future of the university. And the bad news for faculty and exempt staff? No raises next year. In 2014, the university established UNC's five-year fiscal sustainability plan that maps out a multi-year approach to absorb state funding limits and the changing market for higher education. In the email, she talks about four areas that are crucial in sustainable costs and savings. Those areas include an annual staffing plan, ways to reduce non-personnel expenditures, a multi-year strategic investment budget, and staff salaries. The annual staffing plan helped the university identify about $1.5 million in savings by eliminating or restructuring vacant positions. Second, the university set a target of $1.4 million in non-personnel savings, such as staff travel, organizational memberships, promotional materials, and furniture purchases. The plan calls for each staff member to help in the effort to reduce non-personnel spending. Third, the university wants to identify $1.7 million in savings from the multi-year strategic investment budget. Part of this budget is to reduce the spending on new technology. The fourth and final area of the budget resolves around staff salaries. Norton announced that there won't be an increase in faculty or exempt staff salaries next year. She goes on to say, Funding a salary pool of just 2% would require us to identify more than $2.5 million in additional cost savings, and I do not believe that would be prudent. She continues by saying that as classified staff salaries are determined by the state, and although the governor's proposed budget includes a salary increase of 3%, the university does not have the money to fund a salary increase. Norton says the ultimate goal is to work to ensure that the university can deliver on the promise of transformative education in, into the foreseeable future. She closed the email by saying she appreciates the time and effort the staff invests in UNC and its students. At the same time, Norton announced to no raises for faculty and exempt staff. Both Norton and Chief Financial Officer Michelle Quinn received sizable deferred compensation packages for the 2017 fiscal year. This week, the Greeley Tribune reported that Norton received $54,000 in deferred payments and Quinn received $24,000. The Tribune released this information after receiving documents through an open records request. UNC President Nate Haas said that UNC's vice presidential level positions are underpaid compared to their peers at universities of similar size. The news comes following the announcement that UNC will freeze faculty and ex exempt staff salaries for the 2019 fiscal year. Some are questioning the prudence of the compensation as the university has experienced some financial struggles resulting in tuition raises and salary freezes for many faculty and staff. Norton retires from her duties as the university president in 2018 and that can mean new cabinet members and other people in higher positions. The search is underway for her replacement and the selection of the new president will be announced publicly in April 2018. It's been an unusually warm week this week. What do the current weather conditions look like, Abigail? campus. Right now, 60 degrees with humidity at 29% and winds at 9 miles an hour. This is only 21 degrees cooler than our record high set in 2016. For those 8 a.m.s tomorrow, it looks like it's going to be around 43 degrees, warming up to the mid-50s by 10 a.m. Now this week, North Hall decided to ponder the question, if heat rises, why are the mountains colder? Well, the answer to this question might surprise you. It has something to do with something that you might have learned in high school chemistry. It's called the ideal gas law. What this law states is that it predicts the behavior of gas. This time we're talking about air. It says since pressure and temperature are related and that we know that pressure decreases with altitude, that temperature will also decrease. Now this helps meteorologists come up with something called the lapse rate, which is how fast air cools as it rises, which is about 5 degrees Fahrenheit per 1,000 feet here with dry Colorado air. If you have a weather question, text it to our Twitter page or our Instagram and I'll answer it during the next show. Stay tuned for more. Thanks, Abigail. Taking a look at news around the world, 
An earthquake in Iran is now considered the deadliest earthquake of 2017. The earthquake happened on Sunday, November 12th on the border between Iraq and Iran and was recorded as a magnitude 7.3 on the open-ended Richter scale. The earthquake surpasses the magnitude 7.1 quake in Mexico City that occurred in September. The epicenter was 19 miles from ha Halabjab, Iraq, and various aftershocks have been recorded with each one being at least a magnitude 4.5. It was felt in nearby countries including Lebanon, Turkey, and Kuwait. Officials say more than 400 people are dead and thousands more injured. Rescue work has already begun and Iran declared, has declared three days of mourning. The Iranian Foreign Minister Javad Zarif issued a statement in response to the outpouring of support saying, We are grateful for global expressions of sympathy and offers of assistance. For now, we can manage with our own resources. Many thanks for all offers and we will keep you posted. Police officers brewed coffee, made friendships, and took a break from fighting crime to sit down with Greeley residents. Coffee with a Cop allows community members to get to know their law enforcement officers on a personal level. So on Saturday, November 11th, the cops and community got together for two hours at the Blue Mug Coffee Bar off UNC's Central Campus. They encouraged all Greeley residents to stop by the coffee bar, and boy did they. Discussions about local politics, personal concerns, and getting to know the officers beyond the badge circled the coffee house. And I, um, I think the best part about working for uh, City of Greeley, the police department, um, I've been here for 14 years, so I think the, the people I work with, the, the officers, the supervisors, um, are, are great people and they're, they're fun to work with. Uh, we have a pretty good family there. Um, and then also just dealing with the citizens in Greeley, uh, a lot of support from them. Uh, really enjoy um, uh, working with them and uh, being there for them and just, and just getting to know them. I mean, I, I, the people here are great. So uh, Greeley is a great place to live. It's a great place to work. That's why I like Greeley. Coffee with a Cop is an innovative and fun way for police to build bridges with the community members. Welcome to my block party. Glad you can make it. The only triple doubles you get come with fries. Last time you blocked someone, you were online. I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. Uh, 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 uh. Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative, it's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. Clean kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back. I'm meteorologist Abigail Stewart. This beautiful photograph of a Greeley sunset is sent to us today by Renee. Thank you, Renee, for sending this photo in. Now, here we've got a cold front moving in, which is definitely going to impact our weekend forecast. As you can see here, it is bringing some moisture with it, which will show up here in Colorado on Friday. Here's the timeline of the storm system. So right now it's sitting more around Northern California. In 24 hours, it'll be sitting just outside of Colorado. And by 48 hours, it'll be out of the state. The rain is gonna start in the mountains and then end up coming here to Greeley by 3 p.m. tomorrow. We can even see the evolution of this storm on, by looking at the moisture forecast. You can see it comes into to Colorado and brings some moisture with it, then moves on to the plains and eventually moves to the Gulf states. So tomorrow at 8 a.m. it's gonna be around 43 degrees, by noon 62 degrees, and by 5 p.m. we'll see that rain coming with, a hot, with temperatures at only 45 degrees and winds at 22 miles an hour. So we're thinking that the rain is going to start around 3 p.m., which is about a 50% chance tomorrow on Saturday and Sunday. Nice weather, clear, but Saturday is going to be a little bit cooler, 46 degrees, and for Sunday, 55 degrees. Monday and Tuesday, we bring in the clouds, but keep the nice temperatures. Monday, it's going to be around 60, and Tuesday, around 50 degrees. Now, if you're wondering what the temperature will be like on Thanksgiving, our models are starting to think that the temperature here in Colorado is going to be around 60 degrees with some nice weather. Have a nice and safe Thanksgiving break from all of us here at Bear Weather.
also spend eight minutes decorating their little brother. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Thanks, Abigail. UNC is showing support for its veteran students this week through Military Appreciation Week. UNC Veteran Services holds events honoring both student veterans and veterans of Greeley. The week kicked off Monday with the flag raising performed by UNC, UNC Army ROTC cadets. After the ceremony, everyone enjoyed a pancake breakfast served by Veteran Services employees at the Marcus Garvey Center and a student veteran panel at the University Center. The week continued on Wednesday with a Vet Zone certification course and a showing of the film Defending the Fire. The Boulder a cappella group, The Face Vocal Band, performs a sponsored concert at the Moxie Theater before Veteran Services hold its annual military challenge. That's a team-oriented obstacle course with challenges in the same vein of television program Survivor. The week ends Saturday at Nottingham Field at the UNC Bears Military Appreciation Game against California Polytechnic. Have you ever asked why do you need feminism? Or wondered how feminism impacts the world? You could get at least some of those answers at the annual Gender Justice and Feminism Conference. The purpose of the conference is to empower and bring awareness to gender problems in the world. UNC students and staff came together to learn about gender issues and speak about contemporary women in history. Outside the conference was the Let's Float Together tampon and pad drive. They accepted toiletries and monetary donations. With the semester nearing its end, most students feel the stress that comes with college. Lucky for you, self-care for a bear had you covered. The event took place at the GSRC, its purpose to allow students a relaxing break from chaos of classes. Students indulged in healthy snacks while they made some stress glitter mason jars. Students mixed glue, hot water, and glitter to create the sparkly stress relievers. If mason jars weren't for you, you could always take a break in the meditation room downstairs. If you take just 15 minutes a day to do self-care, you increase your overall mental health. So be a healthy bear. The one food that is customary in every college student's lifestyle got a little makeover Tuesday. The Center for International Education put on the Swag Your Ramen event during their annual International Education Week. Students joined together at the Fireside Lounge in the University Center to bring an assortment of different flavors to their ramen. They used the same 99 cent ramen you can get at the store and cooked it in large pots so they'd have enough for everyone in attendance. CIE had everything from seaweed to tofu along with a multitude of seasonings and sauces to fit every student's taste. After students finished swagging their ramen, they sat and mingled with peers and faculty from all over the world. CIE held events throughout the week and had keynote speakers from all walks of life share their stories. If you're interested in studying abroad and want to know more, information stop by CIE's office located in the University Center. And that's our show for tonight. Thank you for joining us. This is our last show for this semester. Until we come back after winter break, be sure to follow us on our Twitter and Instagram account at UNCO Bear News to see what our reporters are up to. We will see you in 2018. Have a good night.